And of course, as always, we, uh, we want everybody to know that whatever is discussed on the show is the opinion of our guests and don't necessarily reflect our official policy. Although I do have to say, if we say something, maybe it does reflect something for me and her myself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so don't, uh, somebody says something bad or, in, or politically incorrect, don't hold us to them in perpetuity. Or if we say something politically incorrect, it's not our fault. To just post a question and uh, we've got some questions we've written down but today is an open show and uh, open forum and uh we'll just run with it and of course uh you know thank you for joining us and uh today we're going to try and sell you whatever we can sell you what the heck and is if there wasn't an industry that people wanted to go to less than a car dealer it's a dentist <laughs> they, they had to reach out to them every six months so it's time for your cleaning and then when they saw them, as they're opening up their mouth and they're sitting there with the thing and their jaws going, hey, 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 hey. they're saying, oh, by the way, you know, we need to change your brake pads on your molars. And, <laughs> uh, and I think we need to flush your, uh, your bi bicuspids here. And yeah. you go, okay, I'll hook up. So I had a really interesting conversation with a, uh, an eye doctor uh, a few months ago. I don't know what the number was. And they are all looking at the dental and the car world as what can they do for upsells because the industry has trained everybody that once a year you get your your eyes checked. I see we're all wearing glasses here. You get your eyes checked once a year. You can go anywhere you want. They do the exact same test everywhere. So the retention, unless you're amazed by them, is zero or could be zero. I should be careful on that. So they're looking for other stuff. And the first thing they're attaching themselves to is this thing called dry eye that nobody has ever really had. Yeah. But you, we're starting to see billboards. We're starting to see all this stuff. And they go to their 20 group dealer meetings or whatever they do. And they're like, nope, dry eye is the next thing. Tell them, you know, ask everybody if they've ever experienced dry eye because you have a treatment for it. And so that's that's where they're chasing now because their business model has been really kind of- And they, they went through 15, 20 years ago, what we're going through now with digital with eye with laser surgery yeah. because 15 20 years ago everybody in 20 years was not going to need glasses yeah and we're all wearing glasses we're all wearing glasses <laughs> but why aren't they selling insurance i think they should sell insurance for when glasses get scratched or whatever to cover that replace there's an opportunity there 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. 100 yeah. i buy these glasses i pay 400 bucks whatever it is sometimes it's covered whatever and then a year later, I scratched the crap out of you know, they got that scratch coating, whatever the hell that is. Um, and, you know, I just, I just want it fixed, dude. Like, well, you know what's funny, you know? though? And their business is probably 60% insurance. Well, yeah. I mean, why, why would you not sell it? So has this happened to you before, Mr. Customer? You know, the screws came out, the, the lens got broken, your kid jumped on it, whatever. You know, you need a new set of glasses. They're 400 bucks. You can only get one set a year from your insurance. What if I could replace those at no cost or with a minimum deductible? Is that something you'd be interested in? Absolutely. People would sign so here's up. The here's grow. the interesting thing, Ian, because that's a fantastic thought. Yeah. You could actually have loaner glasses ready in every prescription because there's only so many. <laughs> right? So you come in, you drop your glasses off, they give you a new pair, you walk home. You're not doing this for a week. Look like this. <laughs> I think we've all just come up with a new here. business. But like my right. when I was, I was yeah. getting to 50 and he goes, I said, well, when do I get readers? He goes, when your arms aren't long enough. I'm like, dude, that's an opportunity to sell them to me right now. Like, what, yeah. what do you mean my arms aren't long enough? What, what are you talking about, man? It's hilarious. Yeah. So that, that's their opportunity too, is all these guys who got laser surgery 10 years ago, now got to buy readers. Yes. Yeah. Good time. And, and actually the laser surgery is sort of like, um, um, I can't think of stuff in the car business, but you got to come back and do it later. Well, you have to do one eye at a time because they don't want to make you blind, 100% blind. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case they fuck up. Yeah. Anyway, I great. find it interesting how these different industries are looking for products, looking for procedures, looking for... Yeah, I talked to a nurse on a plane years ago. They were doing a CSI thing for nurses in the U.S. Like, they were rating them and it was impacting their pay. I said, well, don't worry about that. We've been doing that in the car business for years. You can work those. She goes, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know. You don't actually, they don't, they're not actually expecting you to solve everyone's medical problem on the first visit. I mean, she says, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Like, have <laughs> you never going to happen? Anything? <laughs> have you ever known any business, any person, anything, even your wife or husband yeah. 
Um, that's 97% satisfied with you. Well, they, it was the same I have pretty good days. in the car business. It was like a service CSI, but for medical. I was laughing at it. Yeah. I was like, really? Wow. Well, you've been getting from Starbucks now. Really? You remember, yeah. How was your experience? I had one experience at the Starbucks where it's five to five minutes, no, 15 minutes to, to, to when they're closing. I'm meeting yeah. a buddy for coffee. It's 10 o'clock at or quarter to 10. Yeah. And all of a sudden over the speaker, they, they blast a song at closing time. It's like we're in a bar. <laughs> and, and we're sitting there. And of course, they start loudly cleaning up. And then five two, I couldn't take it anymore. We get up to leave. I go up to the girl and I say, you know what? If you had just come to us nice and said, hey, guys, we're closing in 15 minutes and this company's too damn cheap to pay us overtime, just so you know, we would have happily left. Now they're going to hear from me. Yeah. Funny enough, the next morning in my uh, inbox was a survey. So. so so on that, like that CSI started, and, and again, I, I was with Saturn when it started, and they were one of the first ones to do it, and JD Power and all the other stuff that was going on. But they refused to make it public knowledge. So really, it's absolutely useless for doing a good job. Like, honestly, it isn't. They, you know, they, they need to hold it accountable. They need to say, okay, you need to have a Google rating of this. You need to have a Yelp rating of this. You need to have this, that whatever the thing is, there has to be something, but they got to get out of the CSI business because it is, it is so backwards that you have to have this hundred percent that no, like we, to Jeff's point, no one's ever going to be hundred percent happy with really anything. And that that does not reflect to the customer. So you do an amazing job. As a matter of fact, at the Honda store, I printed it out because we were the top in our zone by quite a bit. I printed it out, blew it up and put it in my service drive. And the next time Honda was in my store, they were like, you got to take that down. You can't have that up there. I'm like, well, <laughs> it's, it's my score. I've worked hard what? on it. What? <laughs> what was the reason? Uh, well, part of it was I had all the other dealers on there too. <laughs> Don't go here. These guys suck. That was part of it. <laughs> they had an issue with, with me doing that. So they didn't like you beating up on all the uh, all the low hanging fruit. Eh? <laughs> exactly. But you know, it's it's just funny. They, 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 there's so much of that. You know, CSI, CSI, CSI. Like if they just said, "Hey, here's the base rating. If you had it, you know, you got the star rating here, and you got a Yelp rating, or whatever the different things are in the industry. And once you got that, we'll just leave you alone. Just stay there." Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think when I when I look at things like CSI or lease retention or service uh, department, um, whatever. I mean, it's the same thing. It's, it's like, okay, so if, if you have those people that are the bottom of the list, what are they doing? Are they penalizing them? Are they, are they going in and looking at the process and seeing why it's broken? No, they're just going, you should improve the numbers. Okay. Like you, they're not really arming the dealership with the why because they probably don't even know. They're just asking the questions, right? They're like, yeah, well, we want our customers to be happy. Um, you know, and, and realistically, it isn't even about that so much. This is the same organizations that can't get the two or even follow their sales process. Yeah. You know, it's funny here. Here's how important CSI is. And I can only speak for Canada. Chrysler stopped sending out CSIs to customers about four or five years ago, partially because they couldn't give a damn anyways. <laughs> but, you know, partially because they knew it was it was a totally uh, ridiculous process. 